So you're wanting to get Windows installed onto your PC, but the only other computer you have lying around is a Chromebook. Well, I figured out how you can easily create a USB installer, and today I'll be showing you how to make one. All you need is access to the PC you want to install to, a USB drive with at least 8GB of free space, and any Chromebook with access to the web store. This guide requires some jumping back and forth from the destination PC and Chromebook, but the process is relatively straightforward. On your Chromebook, open up the Chrome browser and search Chromebook Recovery Utility, and click on the first result. Click on Add to Chrome, then click Add App. Once it's installed, close out of that and open up a new tab. Type ventoy.net and you'll be brought to this page. Click on Downloads and from the list of files, choose the ventoy live cd.iso. You'll be redirected to a GitHub repository with the latest release. Scroll down a bit and under Assets, click on the live cd.iso file. While that downloads, open up a new tab and search for Windows 10 ISO. Click on the link that reads Download Windows 10 Disk Image ISO File. Under the Select Edition dropdown, select Windows 10, and in my case, it's the October 2020 update, though this will change as future updates are released. Click Confirm, then choose your product language, and click Confirm once more. Unless you have a CPU that's 32-bit only, you're going to want to download the 64-bit ISO, click on 64-bit download, and the ISO will begin downloading. You can leave that downloading while we move on to the next step. We need to change the file type of the Ventoy ISO before we can use it with the recovery utility. Open up the Files app and locate the Ventoy ISO you downloaded from earlier. Right click on it and choose Zip Selection. This will zip the ISO so it can be used by the utility. With that complete, we can move on. From either the Chromebook launcher or the apps page in Chrome, open up the Chromebook Recovery Utility. Keep in mind that everything on your USB drive will be erased so make sure that there's nothing important being stored. With that said, click on the gear icon next to the X and choose Use Local Image. Another window will appear. Locate the Ventoy file you just zipped and open it. You'll then be asked to insert a USB drive, so insert your drive now if you haven't already. Before you proceed, remember that everything on your drive will be destroyed, so make sure that nothing important is on it. Again, everything on this drive will be erased, so make backups. Anyways, click Next, and then click Create Now. Let it do its thing and you can move on. You can leave the Windows 10 ISO alone for now as you're going to need your PC for this next step. Eject your flash drive from your Chromebook and take it over to your PC. Insert it into a USB 3.0 port. I'd recommend using one of the back of your system, though if you have a laptop this obviously won't matter. Before you turn on your computer, make sure you know how to access the boot menu. For most modern motherboards, you'll hit the F8 or F11 key. This will vary depending on what brand you have. My ASUS board uses F8, most Gigabyte boards use F12, my Intel board uses F10. If you're unsure, a quick Google search never hurt. Anyways, with your USB drive I've inserted, turn on your PC and hit the appropriate function key repeatedly until you're in the boot menu. In the boot menu, look for a USB drive. I have a SanDisk flash drive, so that's what I'll see, though some flash drives or other USB devices may have a generic name. Before you choose your drive, it's good to note that a menu will appear as soon as you hit enter, but you don't need to worry about it, so it's okay if you miss it. Choose the option that has UEFI next to it and hit enter, though if that doesn't work, choose the other option. You'll then be greeted by the Ventoy Live CD installer. Now if you must know, creating a bootable Windows USB can prove to be tedious on a Chromebook. It used to be possible to use the Chromebook Recovery Utility to write a Windows ISO to a USB drive, but due to some changes Microsoft made, the USB would no longer boot. It's technically still Still possible, but even then it won't really work. So this is where Ventoy comes into play. Ventoy is a multi-boot utility that allows you to drag and drop bootable ISO files like Ubuntu or Windows into the drive and you'll get a list of different boot options once you boot into the USB. No extracting and messing with the file itself is needed. This will allow you to make that Windows 10 ISO that hopefully finished downloading by now bootable. So back at your PC, let's get Ventoy installed. You should by default see a list of installed drives in your system. You don't want to select any internal drive, but instead your USB drive. So in my case, I'm going to choose my SanDisk flash drive by typing the number 2, but this will vary depending on the number of drives in your system. Hit enter, now type the number 1 to install Ventoy onto your USB drive. Hit enter. Now you'll be informed that all data on your drive will be erased. The drive should already be erased, so hopefully you made backups previously, though if you choose to use another flash drive, it will be erased. Hit Y for yes, you'll be asked again, and if you're sure you want to erase it and install Ventoy, hit Y and enter again, and the installation process will commence. After a while, you'll get a message saying that install Ventoy to your drive successfully finished. Now, type the letter B, hit enter, then type the letter Y and hit enter again. While your PC is rebooting, just press the power button to turn it off. Now you'll want to take that USB drive and plug it back into your Chromebook. Open up the Files application, navigate to where the Windows.iso file that was downloaded earlier is located, which should be in the Downloads folder. Nothing needs to be done to this file as Ventoy already recognizes ISO files. Cut the file by either selecting it and hitting Ctrl-X, or clicking cut 
and find your flash drive. Your drive will probably have two data partitions, so make sure that you paste to the larger partition that has Vento installed. This will probably be all empty space. Once you find the correct partition, paste the Windows file and let it do its thing. Once it's complete, you can now eject your USB drive and plug it into your PC. As I said earlier, make sure you know what key you need to use to enter the boot menu. The USB will technically just boot, as if you don't have anything else to boot from, it will eventually go to the installer, but it can potentially be useful if you're experiencing issues. You'll also want to make sure that UEFI boot is enabled if it's supported. Anyways, with a USB inserted into one of your PC's USB ports, again, I recommend using the ones at the rear of your system. If a laptop really doesn't matter, fire up your system and hit the boot menu function key repeatedly until you reach the list of boot devices. Select the boot option that has UEFI next to it. If you don't see an option for UEFI, it's either been disabled or you have an older system. Make sure that it's enabled if your PC or motherboard supports it. Info on how to enable UEFI and if your specific model PC or motherboard supports it can be found online. Select your USB and hit enter. The Ventoy boot menu will now appear and you should see the Windows ISO. Hit enter and the installer will begin to boot. I'll quickly show you how to get Windows 10 installed and briefly discuss what you should do after installation. Once the installer is done booting, You'll be greeted with a purple screen. Choose your language if needed, click Next, then click Install Now. You may or may not see this next screen if you previously had Windows running on your system. You'll probably already be activated if your system or motherboard was used previously, but it's no big deal if this isn't the case. Choose I don't have a product key. If you were previously running Windows and you know what edition it was, make sure to choose the edition that was installed or else you might encounter some activation issues. This won't matter if you're using a brand new motherboard, so choose either Windows 10 Home or Professional. If you want to use features like BitLocker, have access to a bunch of the business management stuff like group policies, choose Pro. But if you're a normal user, Windows 10 Home will be sufficient. I usually choose Pro just because why not? It's technically more secure. This doesn't mean Windows Home isn't safe, Pro just has more security features. Once that's figured out, click Next and choose Custom. This list of drives will vary, but if you have one drive, you should only have one partition. If you have maybe a game library you plan on reusing, you may see multiple partitions, which is okay. If you have like an SSD that you plan to install to that has multiple partitions, it needs to be cleaned. This shouldn't be an issue with a brand new drive, but if you've used the drive before, it will probably consist of multiple partitions. On your keyboard, Hit Shift and F10 to bring up a command prompt window. Type disk part and hit enter. Type list disk and hit enter again. Identify what drive this drive you wish to install Windows onto. In my case, I want to install Windows onto my 120 gigabyte SSD, but make sure you choose the correct storage device if you have other drives that have data in your PC, as you will lose data if this is done incorrectly. Type select disk, followed by your drive number, so I'll type the number zero, and hit enter. This will delete all partitions and any data stored on those partitions of this selected drive, so make sure nothing important is on it and that you chose the correct drive. Type clean, hit enter, and your drive is now ready to be used to install Windows. Exit out of the command prompt window and click the refresh button to see the changes that were made. You should now see an option that shows unallocated space. Choose it, click next, and Windows will begin installing. Once it completes and your PC is rebooting, remove the USB installer so you don't go back into the Ventoy menu. You should now be booting into Windows 10. If you have an Ethernet cable plugged in right now, I recommend unplugging it so you can do the initial setup without a Microsoft account. Your PC will reboot for a second time and then shortly you'll be greeted with the setup. This is all straightforward, just uncheck and skip any Microsoft Microsoft specific junk. The reason you don't want to connect to the internet is that it'll be forced to use a Microsoft account. So if you don't connect, you can create a regular user account. Click limited experience and uncheck everything on this page. After that's completed, Windows will get everything ready and after a while, you'll see the desktop. Congratulations! Windows 10 is installed and you can start getting drivers and applications installed so you can use your PC. If you have a dedicated graphics card and another storage device, we want to make sure they're configured properly. For graphics, if you have a graphics card from AMD, we'll want to follow this tutorial. But if you're team green and have an NVIDIA graphics card, follow this video. If you don't see your other hard drive or SSD in the file explorer, follow this video so you can set it up. Keep in mind that while Windows 10 is completely free to use as I just showed you, you won't be able to customize these settings under personalization, and you will have a watermark in the bottom right corner plugging you to activate. However, activating doesn't need to be expensive as legit activation keys are easily obtainable. I have a video going over a few websites in case you want to have access to these features. If you don't really care about the watermark or customization settings, you won't expect experience any issues and functionality if you leave it as is. Anyways guys, hopefully you found this video useful in some way. Don't forget to leave a like and make sure you're subscribed and have notifications enabled for more quality tech videos. If you have any questions or suggestions, let me know down below in the comment section and I'll do my best to get back to you. Anyways, thanks for watching and I'll see you later.